The Witcher. You probably chanced upon the TV show on Netflix and you decided you like it. Let's chat about the comic books. Hey guys, my name is Jen. So The Witcher. You watched it and it left a great impression on you. And you want to get more stories. I feel you. Thank goodness for literature, right? So there are the books, written by Andrei Savkovsky, which the TV show and the video game were based on, and there's the comics, written by Paul Tobin. In 2014, Dark Horse published a five-issue story arc called House of Glass. In 2015, there's another five-issue miniseries called Fox Children and a one-shot story called Killing Monsters. Then in 2016, Another five-issue story arc was published called Curse of Crows. This omnibus collects all four stories, all written by Paul Tobin and not an adaptation of Andrei Sofkovsky's stories in the books. I'm not sure if Dark Horse is working on the second volume. I hope they are, because I really like this. Good news for everyone who hasn't played the game or hasn't read the books yet. The comic book stands on its own. The stories are centered on Geralt, who is a witcher, a professional slayer of monsters. You'll be fine knowing just that when you start. Okay, let's look into every story arc. First, House of Glass. Geralt meets Jacob, who is being haunted by his undead wife. They get lost in a spooky forest and find a house made of glass. The story is simple and readable. The plot twist in the end is good. The main art is done by Joe Querio and the cover by Mike Mignola. They're well known for Hellboy. This art style I'm not a big fan of because I like eyes, I like details on the face. But this style works for the storytelling. There's a lot of shadow work. It helps set the tone for Geralt's creepy encounters. Second, Fox Children. Geralt is traveling with a dwarf named Adario. They hitch a ride on a boat with a group of men who are on a mission to rescue a kidnapped elven girl. They face a vulpes, a half-fox, half-elf being that can create illusions. Here, I think, Tobin nailed Geralt's character so much that this story was like written by Savkovsky himself. We have to note, though, that the same mythical being, the Valpes, is featured in Savkovsky's latest book, Season of Storms. I don't know any more details as I haven't read the book yet and I don't want to Google it right now because I might stumble across a spoiler. Anyway, back to Geralt. Tobin captured what he's like in the original books. Stoic and heroic. Although he specializes in fighting monsters, he seeks non-violent solutions if possible. He takes the readers to a conclusion that sometimes men can be more frightening and vicious than monsters. It's very interesting. The illustrations, I'm not a fan again. It could have been better. Some faces were empty, just colored in, and I found myself confused many times about who that person was. They're just like lumps with text bubbles. Third, Killing Monsters. This is the one-shot story that became available with the release of the video game's third installment, Wild Hunt. We have Geralt traveling with Vesemir, another witcher. We follow Geralt as he struggles to balance the witcher's code to his own feelings towards abuse and wartime oppression. Witchers are not supposed to interfere in local political affairs. It's quite impressive how Geralt found a solution to his concerns here. The art was done by Max Bertolini, who seems to be fond of black ink. I like it. It's great. The lines and the shadows are heavy. There's not much detail in facial expressions like Querio, but it doesn't bother me as much. Our last story, and my favorite, Curse of Crows. Why is it my favorite? It's because the Trinity is here. Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri. And every one of them is being his or her classic self. Yennefer, manipulative and protective. Ciri, over-adventurous. Geralt, laconic, powerful, loving, and caught in the middle. Always caught in the middle. There are lots of fun moments and banters among the three characters. It's very entertaining to read. Well, at least for a fan of the Witcher universe like me. 
The thing is, this is the story in this collection that has a lot of references to events in the books and games. They're in their usual clothes as seen in the game. Before they tackle the main mission, which is to hunt Astriga, Geralt and Ciri completed a few side quests. The storyline connects it to Savkovsky's book saga. So there are two things that can happen here if you're a new reader. It's either A, it's going to confuse the heck out of you, or B, you'll get the context and you'll appreciate learning more about their family dynamics. The illustrations were done by Piotr Kowalski, and I love it. Every panel was neat and nice to look at. So there, in the last pages, we get The Witcher sketchbook, an interview with Paul Tobin, and some arts. Beautiful art pieces, wow. Overall, this omnibus, it may not be Savkovsky, but it captures the spirit of the Witcher universe. There are some nudity and, of course, violence, so parents be warned. The quality of the physical book itself is good. It uses heavy paper. Outstanding printing job. If you're looking for something easy to read and something to fill the void that the games or the TV episodes have left you with, this is it. Pick it up and enjoy. Thanks for watching.